Okay. Yeah. Outcast fix. So. Okay. While I was walking back to the house, I was thinking. Wait a minute. There are definitely several different types of hens out there. And I think I actually have a few of them. So I'm like. All of these hems are rated for lateral low. They're not rated for horizontal low for some dumb reason. So I'm like, why? Well, it's the way that they're made. This one was the one that was on the other side of the truck. As you can see, it has that brass bushing in there and it's pretty much press fit into the steel housing. And the brass bushing is actually what holds the the uh, the ball. So yeah, it's a pretty neat design, and it's made for lateral load, as in as in uh, you know in out in out in out push pulling and all that stuff. But it's not made to do this, and that's what it was obviously doing with the steering. Now this, on the other hand. This little piece of awesome machinery that I got from Great Britain. Yeah, those Brits. They definitely know how to make some stuff. It's a chromoly M joint. In other words, this is one piece of steel. Obviously, it's been coated in yo-zinc. But, but have it the way the hell they made the stupid thing. Now, it's one piece. But obviously it wasn't made one piece. It's two pieces. Just like this. But this joint right here has been completely welded so that there is no no way to tell that it was two pieces. Unlike this, which has the brass wood wrap in there. This doesn't. Now this is these are definitely two different types of steel. But the ball is taken care of by another piece of steel that's obviously a little bit softer than this. Not as soft as this brass shit, but it's not coated in the yellow brass. So I mean the yellow zinc. So obviously something is going on there. Chromali. So obviously this it's stronger than this, since this is just regular old pot steel, and it's been, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, coated in that crap, uh, so it's weatherproof. Keep on forgetting the name of that. And, uh, well, whatever, it's been coated in the crap. So, yeah, you know, my mind's been on outcast all day since I finally got it fixed. And I've been breaking it all day, so it is what it is. So I put these on the the steering ends just to see will this hold up better than this. Because, yeah, obviously this looks a hell of a lot stronger than this garbage. And it better be considering how much this costs. God, but I got enough of them to hold me over for a while, and I definitely got enough for all the rays if I actually wanted to use it for the steering joint. Oh boy, but Outcast, yeah. So, this truck is nuts in all its glory. I mean, I thought. The Creighton was starting to act like a crate. This truck, and I'm also testing out something else. As you can see, I got the double, uh, the double turnbuckles up and up, and they've been taking, they've been taking pretty much everything. All of this, all of that crazy nonsense. And yeah, that's the actual stock turnbuckles with the steel hem joints. And y'all went and thought about myself over with the truck. This thing is still 30 something pounds of. Ugh, 30 something pounds of eat dust.
and obviously yeah it, it can still go <laughs> god this is times three <laughs> I'm thinking if I actually geared it one to one with a with these batteries, it might be able to do a standing back flip. But who knows what kind of untold carnage will end up happening with the differentials if I did that. So and yeah, this thing is still a 30 plus pound track, so let's not do the standing back flips. Although these tires, these tires are awesome. And yet, I see people popping these stupid tires all the time. Oh yeah. Before I do all that, let me go over my setup. So I got million front and, front and rear. And the center, it's the regular 20 million, but I took out as much as I could and filled it with the max earplugs. And a Mac earplug is somewhere between 40 and 50 million weight. It feels something like that. It definitely feels at least twice as heavy or viscous as the silly body that's in the top already at 20 so. Hence the instant willies on punch three. Where the mostly dead batteries. <laughs> but it is a 30 pound truck. And 30 pound trucks seem to want to do what they do. So, yeah, it's definitely an outcast. And this crusher chassis. Yes! I mean, to be honest, to be completely, perfectly honest, I did not like how squished together this truck was. And when I say squished together, together I mean the wheels. The wheels were so close together that it made it actually hard as hell to control. And yeah, the wind is kicking up like nuts. But it's a good wind. It's the wind from the south that we love. You know what? <laughs> this truck. <laughs> this truck, it, it catches the ruts so perfectly. Wow, it's William. That is like no hope at all. Maybe you should live in the rut, outcast. Yeah, there you go. You can stay in the rut. The rut is going to go. I was like, hell no. Hell no. Yeah, I'm just out here finishing off this battery. Hopefully, I got the ESC on the high discharge. Otherwise, it'll drain the battery down to 3.2 volts, and I don't want that. Yeah, even on intermediate. On the default, I think the default is intermediate. Hopefully, it's not low. Because on intermediate, it'll drain the damn battery to, to stupid levels. Before I'm hitting LVC. I'm like, why the hell you want to train the damn batteries down to 3.2 volts? Shit. You know how long it takes to charge some freaking batteries that big? From 3.2 volts? The damn. And I use the T400. Yeah, it'll hit that capacity warning. Well, it'll stop charging because it's over capacity. I love these tires. Oh yeah. People were popping these tires all over the place. 
and why? Because they're gonna the goddamn trucks and the truck will hit a rut or catch a wheel. One wheel will spin faster than the other and the diffs will unload to one wheel on one side and the wheel go pop. It is that simple. Like any other truck, this truck can obviously send all its power to one wheel. It's called the path of least resistance. In other words, if all three wheels and do not do this ever, ever. If all three wheels on one, one, two, three are held up, oh, power is only gonna be sent to this wheel. So I'm pressing down on this wheel. My two feet got these top. So yes, is that something? Yeah, and this thing just definitely hit LVC. It was like, ah, oh, like, oh, it's over with. No more, no more fun. No more fun. Oh boy. But anyway, might as well go in and show my setup since I'm screwing around like this. Y'all already saw it once. Oh man. Okay, so we have the basic Max 5, Hobby Star, giant batteries, battery for the lights and the fans, big fans, and yeah, I need to replace that. This, this, this light. The fan for the Hobby Wing only has like, like three blades. <laughs> oh god. As for the body, yeah, this is like one of the last bodies I completely shoot. Definitely need it. I mean, look how much I put on the rear. Yeah, just so the rear doesn't get destroyed. Oh, yeah. It is what it is. It's a mess. It's a lovely mess. <sighs> okay, outcast. You're back. And you're loving life. And I haven't destroyed you yet in one day. Which is fine by me. Seriously. And you have got a wing mount that actually wants to work. Oh, boy. I mean, this thing is Freaking ridiculous. And the wing actually wants to stay on and it's not destroying the body. Oh man. Outcast 8S. <sighs> but Outcast 8S. I am not about to carry this ginormous stuff at home. Just want to come out and finish these batteries and the batteries are finished and that's all I got. Except I want to rumble on about one more thing and that's this Dumbo. I keep on saying that this thing is like A plus in terms of cheap transmitters that actually work. But the thing that comes with this truck now it has all the awesome settings and all the goofy, smart, whatever, and whatnot. But I hate, if there's anything I absolutely can't stand about this rig, are those stupid spectrum transmitters. They tend to unbind themselves while you're running the truck. And I know many people have had this 
happened to them where you're running the truck and everything is just stopped and the truck just roll off it's like what the fuck is going on uh, it's just it's just roll uh, it's done and then you're try, trying to find your little bound plug to rebound the damn junk oh wait a minute it doesn't use the bound plug it use that butt but then the button stopped working and now you're like huh it don't want to bind uh, it don't want it don't want i'm pushing the goddamn button and don't want to let me get this fucking garbage out of this truck and put in this $40 I could hug this thing 40 bucks and it always works you press the damn button to turn it on it doesn't F around it just turns on it works and it has great range and the response time is like three times as much it's three times as fast as that spectrum garbage and people are like oh get a dx5 it'll help all your cars on one no spectrum crap from me i got a dog <laughs> I mean, you turn it on and it works. You don't, you turn on the spectrum. You turn the damn spectrum on and it has to sit up there for like eons and eons until it finally figures out, oh, I'm on. Maybe I should connect to the truck. And like five minutes later, it'll, it'll start going. But when you turned it on, it wasn't, gonna, it wasn't doing shit. That's my experience with that Spectrum smart thingy that I want to check. And people are like, oh, you gotta do it. I, I, Outcast and, and the and the Creighton both came with those things. And they both did the same exact thing. They would turn on and have to search for the fucking car. Search for its receiver. Search for you if you're holding it in your hand. You better have it somewhere near the truck or it wasn't gonna do shit. It's one of those. And people are like, oh, oh, you gotta get, I'll get used to it. I'll throw it in the fucking garbage. Give me my dumb ball. Give me my controller that turns on the first time. Please. I use this damn thing forever. Okay, that, that's my ramble. I got my outcast back. And I'm happy. And the truck is happy. And we can call it a day before the sun kills me.